You didn't start a gym to make money. You started a gym to make a difference. Here's the problem. If your gym doesn't make money, and I mean be profitable, you're going to go out of business or you're going to run out of time. I'm Chris Cooper. This is Run a Profitable Gym, and this is our leaderboard show where every month I highlight what the best gyms in Two Brain are doing and how they're doing it. Today I'm talking about the most profitable gyms in Two Brain right now. I'm going to give you their actual numbers, but I'm going to keep their gym name anonymous. And then I'm going to talk you through exactly how they're getting that. Now, net owner benefit is basically what you earn from your gym. So that's profit, and it's also like your salary. And you might want to classify these differently depending on where you live in the world because you want to avoid overtaxation, and I get it. So we call net owner benefit the combination of everything that your business pays you. This can also include the things that your business buys for you, like your vehicle, uh, your cell phone bill, your internet, maybe it rents an office in your house, whatever. The importance of being profitable, though, is usually understated and undermined in the fitness industry. We sometimes even like villainize the people who say we want to be more profitable. But here's the reality. Every year, 10,000 people join our army of, of fitness trainers and entrepreneurs because they want to change the world. They have maybe had a transformation themselves. They're inspired. They just want to help people. And every year, 9,000 of those go bankrupt. And every year, when you talk to these 9,000 people, if you can find them, because they're usually out there working, selling real estate, or they got a job at a software company or something, if you can find them and you say, like, why did you quit? They'll always say, oh, burnout. Oh, the long hours were just too much. Very rarely they'll say, I wasn't making enough money because they don't want to seem greedy. But the reality is that the reason they burned out was because they were working every hour because they weren't making enough money in the hours that they worked. The reason that they were working every hour is because they couldn't afford to hire staff because they weren't making enough money. The reason that they were fighting with their spouse every single day over the grocery bill was because they weren't making enough money. And while money doesn't solve every problem in life, there are a lot of monies that can a lot of problems that can only be solved with money. Money solves the money problems. And so we want to make gyms successful. Now, if you're running a gym, it doesn't matter how many members you are, you have, if you're running a gym on a tight, tight profit margin, like you're just barely breaking even, the problem is that you're going to run out of time. You're going to run out of runway. You're not going to be able to keep the gym going because stuff always happens. Let's say that you're coasting along and you've got a 10% profit margin. Some people in the industry would even say that's good, that's healthy. But a 10% profit margin means that the second your rent goes up or you get one bill that you hadn't foreseen or a piece of equipment equipment breaks or a trainer leaves and takes 10 clients, you are losing money. Like your business is going backward. If you're only running a 10% profit margin, any little change in business will be catastrophic to your business. You need to be shooting for about a 30% profit margin in the fitness industry. And there are some who do better than that. What does that translate into? I know you don't want to listen to a podcast about percentages and profit margin. It translates into dollars. As business owner, you have to think in percentages, but you get paid in dollars. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's talk about the gyms that were most profitable and a rolling three average in uh, August this year. Now, the reason that we use a rolling three average is because I don't want to include gyms that have like one great month and then just assume that they're going to keep having these amazing months forever. I'm sure you saw this before. You would you would get these ads from these ad agencies, right? And they would say like, Jimmy is going to be a millionaire because he had one month that where he did $80,000 in revenue. Well, first of all, revenue is not profit. What matters is not how much money came into the business. What matters is what Jimmy took home. That profit is what allows Jimmy to hire more staff, pay his staff better, build more gyms, and basically expand his impact in the world. It's not revenue, and it's certainly not member headcount. And it really isn't having one good month and then just assuming that the good times are just going to keep on rolling forever, because that isn't what happened. So what we do is we take a rolling three-month average in profit, and we say, like, how much profit did you take in each of those three months? So when I give you a number, that's their monthly profit. But they've shown that they are going to make that consistently for at least three months. The second thing we do is we put this in U.S. dollars because I want you to be comparing apples to apples here. So even though some of these gyms are not in the U.S., 
way to go. Congrats to everybody. Uh, we did translate their net owner benefit into US dollars so that you could see exactly how much they're earning. Okay, that's enough. Let's get into the top 10 earners for net owner benefit in Two Brain in August. The 10th place gym for net owner benefit in August came from the US and they made $16,937 take home. That's really, really, really great. I'm, I'm so thrilled for them because these are people who are in this for the right reasons, they're helping people, they're creating great careers for their staff, and I know this because they are making a great career for themselves. You are kind of the crash test dummy in your business. If your business can't pay you, then it really hasn't proven that it can pay staff either. And so I, when people are making a really good NOB, I know that all trickles downhill, that their staff are making a good wage, that their clients have found a good, strong, sustainable home that won't be wiped out by the next you know, lease increase. Ninth place, this gym is from Sweden and the owner took home $17,327 US on average per month. Amazing. Uh, eighth place from the US, $17,551. Seventh place also in the US, $18,000 even. These people are paying themselves $18,000 a month in US dollars every single month. Uh, sixth place, $18,528. Fifth place, $21,120 a month take home. Amazing. For the fitness industry, th these numbers have never been heard before. Not at scale, not in a replicable way. Um, you've seen the ads from the ad agencies, this guy earned $50,000 in one month, and you know well enough to be skeptical of those. But these people are doing it consistently, they're doing it in a replicable way, and they can count on it to continue. And more and more in Two Brain, we're seeing this happen at scale. Uh, Fourth place, $21,458. This was a gym in Norway. That's take home net owner benefit. Third place, $23,603. That's in the US. Second place, $28,677 uh, $28, US take home per month. And number one, and this is a gym in the States too. $37,507 per month take home. That's incredible because they're not just going to go buy a Ferrari with that money. What are they going to do? They're going to invest it in the future. They're going to invest it in their community. They're going to invest it in more gyms. They're going to invest it in staff. They are going to multiply the impact that they're having in this world. And if this gym is taking home $37,507, that's profit you know they are able to reinvest that to have a massive impact that a lot of us can only dream about. Top three gyms were all in the States. That doesn't usually happen. Two Brain is a worldwide company with gyms all across the planet. There are a thousand gyms in our program right now, 2,500 alumni. It's rare that we see all top three finishers in one country, but this month we did. Congratulations, US. Uh, despite what everybody's saying about your the economy, uh, the top three gyms in net owner benefit, the most profitable gyms in the world, all came from the US this month. So take that for what it's worth. More important to you, the listener, how the heck did they do it? Well, let's get into that. The first thing that I want to highlight here is how did these profit like in these gyms compared to the worldwide averages. Well, you know, every year Two Brain publishes our state of the industry guide. We're the only ones that can do it at scale because we want to know what the averages are. You know, if we didn't know what the averages were, we wouldn't even know if $37,000 a month in profit was a good number or if that was the average or if that was below average. Well, let me tell you how good this is. The average in the fitness industry worldwide right now is between $2,500 and $6,000. This top earning gym earned six times the high average number, which is incredible, good for them. But all the two brain gyms are averaging well over the industry average. And what's really crazy here is that if you look at our data from four years ago, when we really started ramping up the state of the industry data collection and reporting period, the average NOB from a lot of gyms was even less. People were just not even making a living wage. You know, $6,000 a month in profit or net owner benefit to the owner, that's not bad, right? Like that's seventy. dollars $2,000 a year, you're doing okay. Your spouse probably has to have an outside job. It's probably not enough to support an entire family. Maybe depending, you know, if you live in a pretty rural spot, it might be, uh, but that's not really enough to support a family, put something down for retirement, maybe buy an asset like your building. However, it's better than it's been, right? That number is coming up. 
$6,000 a month in take home. I think that's a pretty good reward for the fitness industry right now. I can't wait till that number hits 100,000 on average, but you know, two brain gyms are getting there. Next, though, is when you're hitting $20,000, $30,000 a month in profit, you're going to reinvest that. And that's really what our Tinker program is all about. So, uh, congratulations. Um, these owners are using various strategies that all comes down to basically prioritizing what they want and understanding that your business has to make money, the owner has to get paid, or it's not sustainable. And when your gym goes out of business for money reasons, your clients lose out on their fitness and health. If your gym went bankrupt today, you know, the, the thinking would go like, well, people would just go to the gym down the street. They would find another gym to do their CrossFit ad. And sometimes that's true, but data shows that only about 30% of clients will maintain their fitness journey if your gym closes. 70% will stop. Like you owe it to them to be profitable. Forget about buying your kids fancy clothes and putting food on your own table. Forget about getting your spouse that new car that they need. Think about what happens to your clients if you go to business. 70% of them will stop exercising. That's Great. That's scary, right? You got into this to make an impact. Let's make sure that you're actually doing it. Here's some quotes from our net owner benefit leaders this month. The first is consistency. This owner said, we expect our net owner benefit to improve next month. Our net owner benefit is actually down because of some investments in marketing infrastructure. So here's a great reason to be profitable. If you're profitable, you can reinvest money to make yourself more profitable later. How do you reinvest? Well, not by buying 10 more rowers. You invest by increasing your ad spend, trying different ads. You invest by giving your staff more training. Maybe it's getting a mentor for your GM or your COO. You invest by buying your building. You, in, you might invest by growing your space, or that might just be another expense. Uh, the next person said, we've had this NOB for around six months or so, and we expect it to go up. Again, because they know what to do to grow their business, they're very confident that their net owner benefit is going to keep increasing. They're not doing these like six-week challenges, these one-and-done marketing tricks that get them a, a little bit of cash flow and then go away. They have a clear and consistent plan, and they know that what they've learned in TwoBrain are things that they can just keep repeating, repeating, repeating forever, and that's exactly what the fastest-growing gyms in TwoBrain do. They take what they're taught with their mentor. They do the work. They do the hard reps until they've made it a habit. And then once they've made it a habit, they work to make it better. And they just keep growing and doing the same stuff over and over and keep growing forever. Um, the next person said, we expect the numbers to stay at this level. Now, we've got one outlier here, okay? Uh, this is a gym who had a dramatic... Um, uh, I wouldn't call it a stroke of luck, but good fortune. And she said, we're fortunate to be located close to the CrossFit Games, so that bumped up our revenue and gave me more opportunity to invest funds into my net owner benefit. Now, she has also been in the top 20 for net owner benefit even with, without the CrossFit Games showing up right next to her gym. But what's really important here is that she had the structure and the systems and the team in place so that when the CrossFit Games announced, hey, we're going to be running our event like a block from your gym. She said, great, I don't have to add staff. I don't have to add systems. We know how to run this business and we can just accept this good fortune that's come our way, right? Luck is where preparation meets opportunity. And if you're not set up to capitalize on luck, you won't. This opportunity could easily slip through your fingers. Look what happened when the CrossFit Games, the same event was in Madison. You had some gyms capitalize on that opportunity because they had the systems and the processes and the staff set up to do that. Other gyms really didn't capitalize on the opportunity. They didn't know what to do. They ran free open gym times or they would close down their gyms to let competitors uh, practice putting out their own members. Like they did not have a plan. This person had a plan. That's why she was able to capitalize on the good fortune of the CrossFit Games showing up next door. And that's why she deserves to stay on this net owner benefit leaderboard. But even if that hadn't happened, she was top 20 anyway. Another big theme of these most profitable gyms is that they don't focus on client headcount as much as they focus on client value. That's called ARM, average revenue per member. The other thing that they focus on heavily is adherence. They make sure the client show up and use the package that they've bought. Total attendance by a client isn't a great predictor of retention, but adherence is. The difference is this. If I sell somebody a package for 16 classes a month 
and they only show up for 12 of those classes, they're more likely to cancel than the person who pays for 12 classes and shows up for all 12. It's not which package they buy, it's what percentage of their package they use that really counts for retention. And these people know that. So this person said, we do a lot of personal training for new clients, and every new member has an average of 10 to 12 personal training sessions in the first few months. Well, that boosts ARM, but it also keeps people around longer, and that's that's how you build your income over time is you have high value clients and you keep them around a long time. It's not a volume game. Like a high number of clients actually pushes both of these down. This uh, Another person said staff communication was the key to their high net owner benefit. Um, she said, we wrote down core values and we teach our trainers to base decisions off that as a compass. What an amazing starting point. So not only do you have a very profitable gym, but you have staff that are aligned with your core values, who can make decisions on their own, who can follow your processes. They have freedom and responsibility within a framework. And now you know this is gonna be able to continue without your constant hand on the wheel. Amazing. This owner had some unique insight and he said, we build relationships for partnership agreements, which required a whole year's worth of focused work. It was a lot more work than I'd anticipated, but it was so well worth it. Another gym also mentioned partnerships. They said, we've been quite successful with corporate clients and now we have six different businesses that we do workouts for every week at their locations. So smart. Another client on the leaderboards said that they attribute some of their success to long-term planning in real estate. They said, we bought the building and now we pay ourselves rent. Ah, another great way to kind of double your return from the business is get profitable enough to be able to buy your building. And then once you have that building secured, you can pay rent to yourself and those profits keep coming. And this is how profit can compound. Another person said, uh, we've been focusing a lot on retention and paying ourselves first for the last few years, and it's really paid off. So when they say pay yourself first, they're talking about using the profit first methodology that we teach in TubeBrain. Now, hey, look, I want you to have a profitable gym, not because I want you to buy a Ferrari. I mean, you can if you want to. I don't have a Ferrari. I want to have a profitable gym so that I know this gym is going to be around for my clients and create real like lifelong careers for my coaches and give people a place where they can become healthier, extend their lifespan, extend their health span and do it with me. Frankly, I, I love just having friends to work out with. The way that I want to help you do this is to build the habits that these strongest, most profitable gyms have. We publish every day, free materials to help you do that. And still, a lot of gyms struggle, even after they get the free materials, because they don't have the habits to succeed. They don't carve out time every single day to build their business. They're unfocused, they're overwhelmed, they're distracted, they don't know what they should do, and so they start the day at 5 a.m., they end the day at 9 a.m., at 9 p.m., and they look back and say, man, I didn't do anything to change the trajectory of my gym today. It's gonna to be exactly the same tomorrow. And they see this 30 year tunnel of hard work for no growth and they wonder like, how can I take control? Well, the way that you take control is what we call the golden hour. I've just published a new book called The Golden Hour. You can find it on Amazon or Audible. And in this book, I give you a golden hour challenge. I'm going to be running a golden hour challenge to help you develop the, the habits and the focus that will grow your gym. I'm going to be doing that in our private group for gym owners, but I'm also going to be doing it for free in our public group at gymownersunited.com. All you have to do, you don't even have to buy the book, go to gymownersunited.com, join the group, and starting November 1st, every single day, I will post a prompt to help you establish your golden hour, build the habits, and do the marketing that will grow your business. I'm gonna tell you every single day exactly what to do. I will give you like a business workout of the day. I will say, do this today, copy here. I'm even gonna give you demo videos on how to do it. So when I say, check in with five of your clients. I'm not just giving you that as a suggestion and leaving you to figure it out. I'm giving you a video of here's me checking in with five clients. Here's exactly what I said, what I said to their responses and what the goal of the check-in was. This is a 30 day challenge that you can do for free to start building some momentum and taking charge of your business. And you can just do it. You don't have to sign up for anything. Just go to uh, gymownersunited.com and all the details will be there on November 1st. My final quote is from one of these leaders on this leaderboard. They said, I made a massive improvement 
starting with my investment in two-brain business. We took the gym from 25K months to 45K months, but the biggest jump was when I committed to one hour a day of marketing after I dialed in my systems. Look, the combination of habits and focus and mentorship is the most powerful force in the world to grow your gym. And if you can grow your gym, it means you can grow the health span and lifespan of your clients, which means you can make healthier communities, contribute to your local economy, and just feel amazing about what you're doing here on the planet. Thank you for doing that for gym owner, for gym goers. I want to do that for gym owners. I'm Chris Cooper. This is Run a Profitable Gym, and I will see you out there on the floor.